Research. A popular opinion says that it means going to seances, holding hands in the dark, singing hymns, and perhaps getting in touch with your dead relatives. But in this, popular opinion is only partly correct because it is confusing a psychical research with a spiritualism. A psychical research is a science and is rapidly becoming an exact science. Its object is to, is to ascertain by exact experimental methods how far the alleged phenomena of the science room can be brought into line with normality. Uh, these uh, phenomena which are produced by people who claim abnormal powers and who call themselves mediums can be divided into physical and mental. The mental includes uh, clairvoyance, uh, psychometry, the direct voice which uh, spirits are supposed to produce at seances and similar uh, manifestations. The physical uh, phenomena includes a telekinesis or the uh, abnormal movement of objects without a physical contact, the poltergeist uh, phenomena you read about in connection with haunted houses and similar uh, manifestations. There is an idea that the, the study of alleged abnormal phenomena is quite modern. But that is not the case. People have been interested in psychic uh, phenomena from the very earliest times, and even the literature of the subject is very old. In our research library of some 12,000 volumes, we have books going back right to the 16th century. I'll show you one of them. Uh, for instance, here is one here, written by Louis Levata. It is called Of Ghosts and Spirits Walking by Night. And this must be the very first book printed in English which deals with a survival as we know it today. I'll show you another one. Here is one written by Oliver Goldsmith and deals with the famous Cock Lane Ghost. The extraordinary part of this book is that it describes a seance in a girl's bedroom exactly as if it might have been written yesterday. But modern research proceeds on vastly different lines to what it did in the 16th century. We now require a fully equipped laboratory, which I'll show you. <coughs> If a man comes to us and says that he can produce abnormal uh, phenomena, then we test him by instrumental means. We have a number of special instruments for this purpose, including a dictaphone, a cinematograph projector and cameras, X-ray apparatus, infrared, ultraviolet, and many others, such as microscopes, etc. Now here, are some very ingenious slates which I have taken out of our museum of such objects. Now these slates are very ingenious. Here you see a pair of simple slates, but not quite so simple. And when I tell you I gave eight pounds for them, you will know that there is a reason for the cost. A touch of a spring and you notice that they are covered with writing and a drawing uh, of an alleged uh, spirit. Here is another exhibit from our museum. Apparently it is a very well-made mahogany box which I will proceed to lock. Now that to all intents and purposes is locked fast. But by touching a screw here one can open the box whether it is locked or not. This is the kind of thing that some fraudulent mediums use, though, although not, of course, under any scientific control. I will now show you 
the very ingenious mechanism of this box in detail. And you will see that the staple has been caught in the lock. Of course, the staple has come from the lid. When I, <coughs> when I close the box again and replace this pin, you'll notice the box is again locked. I will now unlock it and of course the staple is back in the lid again. Although it would uh, defy anyone to find where a mechanism was hidden. We get some extraordinary investigations to do, but I think the most extraordinary was the opening of Joanna Southcott's famous box. Now, this box was opened at the Church House Westminster in 1927, and a wave of excitement passed through the audience as I cut the steel bag. The box contained the most extraordinary collection of objects. Here is a wire puzzle, a very ancient puzzle. Joanna Southcott's uh, nightcap, very curious. A dice box, but what Joanna wants with a dice box, I can't say. A lottery ticket, number 382 for 1814. I'm afraid it didn't win anything. A horse pistol, an ancient purse full of really very valuable coins. This is the most interesting exhibit. Books, uh, several books, as a matter of fact, and a piece of paper printed on the Thames, February the 3rd, 1814. Well, I have shown you the very curious contents of that box, but I'm afraid that there was nothing in it. Uh, which Joanna Selcott said would save the nation in a time of emergency. Well, you have seen our laboratory and we are now back in the library, which is also our science room, where all our tests are held. I will now show you our latest piece of apparatus. Here is a box like a sentry box, which is made to test an alleged clairvoyant or thought reader. This man stated that he could find hidden objects in a room. So <coughs> we had our suspicions that he found these objects by watching the audience or by getting indicia from the movements of the audience. So we had this box made so that we could cover up portions of a person's uh, anatomy apart at a time. For instance, that, that panel number one we found that our uh, theory was correct because when the person who knew where the object was was entirely hidden in this box, the clairvoyant failed. He could not find the hidden object. Now here is a totally different piece of apparatus. If a man comes to us and says that he can make objects move without physical contact, we try this table on him. This table is in two portions. It's really a cage within a cage. And the center portion rises. We hoped it would rise by psychic power, but unfortunately we have never got it to, got it to rise by those means yet. But this is a fraud-proof table. Inside the table are various uh, musical toys, like a, a toy piano and uh, the pen pipes, etc. The eight panels in this table can only be moved by opening this flap and putting one's hand down into the table. Therefore, if we get any of these musical toys being worked upon while we are sitting around the table and the table, the flap is closed, then we know that uh, the noises have been caused, or rather the movements have been caused by abnormal means. Uh, and we proceed further with our investigations. <coughs> <coughs> so, you see that psychical research means a good deal of knowledge about many things. But we are progressing. Not only are we progressing, but orthodox science is taking a very keen interest in the subject. And already, many universities in various parts of the world
as for instance at Leiden in Holland, uh, Duke University in America, Johns Hopkins University in America, and more recently a group connected with the University of London has been formed and it is hoped that some information will be uh, derived from our experiments. In conclusion, I do earnestly hope and trust that any of you who come across cases of hauntings, uh, poltergeists, uh, unusual happenings of any sort will communicate with me care of the Movietone News.